Transformative is a series of short films that try and explain the history of fashion photography as seen from the perspective of the stylist, the makeup artist and the hairdresser. Tell me a little bit about models. Do you obsess over a model? Is there a model you particularly... Oh, if only I could do this to Kim Kardashian. There's a, I'd love to do this to Carly Kloss. I wish I could work with Karen Ellison. Who is, is uh, that? Do you have a favourite model? And is there somebody you particularly want to work with? I think Guinevere is great. Yeah. I really love her. I've worked with her once and she was just... Sh she's stunning for a start, but yeah. she's also... Um, She's very human, there's something very human right. about her. She's very yeah. relaxed and um, she loves makeup and face painting and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But models, I, I don't really obsess about them and I'd much rather be working on a, a street cast person. Yeah. And I suppose that's part of the conversation about having a narrative or a story yeah. and creating emotion. Because I think if you shooting something, I, I suppose perhaps <clears throat> also not, coming from a, a beauty background yeah. maybe my ideas of beauty aren't as uh, I don't making something beautiful is not the first thing I think about yeah. and actually if anything it's a challenge for me to remind myself I have to try and make this beautiful and right. often I get stylists saying oh yeah that's great but we still want it to be beautiful right. and I'm sort of just like why <laughs> you know of course yeah. of course that's how the industry works and um, that's what appeals but for me it's much more about the character and the story yeah so so when you say you street cast people do, do you cast yourself I have I, done, I yeah. do you do you go out into the street and look for models yourself um uh, not too much, but if I'm doing a shoot, then I will suggest people. Yeah. Yeah. If I if I've got the opportunity to, or. Um, I mean, there's some totally great looking people out there, obviously in the yeah, world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they don't turn up as models; they turn up. You know, you see them in clubs or you see them in whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, there are some fantastic people out there. Mm. But you don't. It's not something that you're sort of going up with a sort of polaroid and saying, okay, well. No, I mean, I, I possibly could do, yeah. I don't always have the luxury of being asked uh, my, you know, an opinion on, on, on who, you know, often that's down to the photographer or the stylist. Yeah. But um, I have done shoots in the past that I've cast myself or at least had a bit more of an input. And uh, I think it's just, again, it's that element of being able to, um, uh, as a viewer, being able to kind of connect with an image. Yeah. And often the beauty world, you're so far removed from everything in that picture, it mm. becomes very inhuman and therefore very totally. unemotional. It's weird, isn't it? I mean, I've done countless more. I've done a lot of beauty campaigns over the years I've worked mm. for some of the bigger companies, um, and they spend so much time doing things like making each nostril symmetrical mm. or putting the eyes at the same level or just mm. taking any any sort of natural not a mistake but anything yeah, that they yeah. would consider like human. Say, yeah it's anything human out of it yeah, yeah. and you have these images which look all look the same from beginning to end well totally and you yeah. think how can that work marketing wise yeah. sorry how can that work marketing wise yeah. because it doesn't it just looks like the same as everybody else's ad yeah yeah I, I, I feel the same and actually I often get um, people that ask me about retouching and I think a lot of people think I'm really anti-retouching mm. and um, because in their perspective retouching means doing exactly what you said, mm. removing all the mistakes, making mm. something symmetrical and airbrushing. I love retouching. Yeah. I, it's the most powerful tool yeah. that I can use in my work if I ever, some, sometimes I do uh, personal projects and I yeah. always retouch even if it's just, you know, changing the colour to make it a slight mood, you know, I mean, mm. I'm totally not as versed as you are in retouching, but I, I think it's amazing. It's just like any tool, it's whose hands it falls into. Yeah. And um, I suppose retouching for me just doesn't mean airbrushing. It mm. means enhancing something, so. Yeah, well, it's just part of the whole process. It's, yeah. It's, you're absolutely right. It's just like another, another yeah. part of your kit if you want. Totally. Same with the same as you have a camera or you have whatever it is. Mm. But, you know, the, ability, the ability to be able to change things yeah, after yeah. the picture has been taken yeah. um, and to discover things at that point as well because yeah. once you start moving, moving things around yeah, you get yeah. new forms new compositions new, new new ways of looking at it and yeah which you couldn't have seen when you were just taking it yeah um, let's get back to this picture <laughs> tell me a little bit about that well sometimes like this this one for instance um, I uh, 
was a bit. I, I mean, the internet, um, un- obviously unavoidable, but probably the most important form of uh, communication of images and people yeah. looking at. And actually, a, a lot of the time, um, yeah, it's in, partly in jest, when I'm making an image, I just think, what's going to work really well on Tumblr? Right. What's going to go like Tumblr mad? Yeah. But that's, no, I think that's an important thing. If you're working purely for magazines, you'd say, okay, well, look, what would make a great dog page spread? Yeah. What would make the best front cover? What yeah. would make the best single page, etc.? So I think that's perfectly yeah. reasonable. And also to sometimes, yeah, I guess, look at images on their own. Mm-hmm. You know, this doesn't really have any relevance, I think. You know, it's sort of on its own in the story anyway. There's no, yeah. nothing else like that. But I think the thing is, for me, if I can get one image from an yeah. editorial that I think will go viral, then yeah. that then that's kind of a win. Yeah. And um, that's all that was about. <laughs> well, I'm going to push you a little bit more, because it's not yeah. all that's about. Because there must have been a thought process that goes behind putting... Have you put elastic bands around that person's tongue, or was it tied? Or? Yeah, it was elastic bands. Yeah, yeah. it was elastic bands. Um, well, there's a, a few stuff, a few images I've seen of, like, um, you know... People with mouths open or coloured ink on tongues or like you yeah. know ink in eyes and blah blah blah, and um, I guess it was just another one of these thought processes of what can we shoot, what really strong images could we make, what yeah. about tying something around someone's tongue that would look great, yeah. and it was really just um, a sort of head down on on paper sort of idea that you know yeah. came up to do something like that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>